again, Jacob here, floating into 3CK's The Great Exploration. We got some fun things in store as we move in to discover God's plans for you. You won't want to miss it. We've made it. Green Cross's Kids Church at Home. I'm Kyle, and I'm super glad you've joined us. It's officially week two of our summer series, The Great Exploration. Discovering God's plan for you, and big things are coming. For real, it's gonna be epic. If you remember, last week, we learned about Noah and his willingness to obey God, even when it was hard. If we want to be used by God, we have to be willing to listen as well. Now, this week, we are going to learn from a story about a guy who really doesn't want to listen to God. Let's just say things swallow him up for a bit until he realizes that God's plan is best and we should turn to him and his word no matter what we are feeling. All right, let's get to it. 3CK Church at Home, here we go. Well, hello, Annie here, and I'm so glad you joined us today as we continue the great exploration, discovering God's plan for you. This month's stories are going to remind us that God wants to use people just like you and me to build his kingdom. It's amazing. Now today we learn about another character in the Bible, but this one straight up disobeyed God when God asked him to do something. Can you ever think of a time that you disobeyed and maybe had to face a consequence because of what you did? I know, I know, it's not necessarily the most fun topic, but stay with me. I want you to find someone at home that's right, it's time. Go find your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your grandma, your dog, whoever. And I want you to talk with them about a time you did disobey and maybe had to face some not so fun consequences because of it. I'll give you all some time. aren't very fun. They don't happen for just no reason, but they also don't happen just to torture us, even if it might feel that way sometimes. When we do something wrong, we kind of deserve a consequence. I mean, even as an adult, if I do something I shouldn't, there's a consequence. If I look at my phone while driving, I deserve a ticket. If you don't do all your homework, you kind of don't really deserve the A. With that, let's look at our character for today. Today we're learning about a guy named Jonah. Ever heard of him? Well, Jonah was actually a prophet from the Old Testament in the Bible. That's all the parts of the Bible that happened before Jesus was born. But what's a prophet, you ask? Great question. Professor! Ah, yes, a prophet. A prophet is someone who declares a message publicly that comes from God. He would have been inspired by God to speak on his behalf to others. It was a pretty big deal. Oh, that helped. Yes, as always, that totally helped. So clearly Jonah was somebody who followed God. But what happens when Jonah's asked to do something that he doesn't really want to do? Well, we're going to see that his response is very different than our guy Noah last week, who was ready and willing to build the ark even though it was super hard. Now let's go ahead and grab our Bible so we can check out what happens with Jonah. All right, we're going to be looking at Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Let's go. Let's check it out. A message from the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. The Lord said, go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it. The sin of its people have come to my attention. So here he is with a message from God. And we learned last week that we should really listen when God asks us to do something. But what happens in verse three? Jonah ran away from the Lord. He headed for Tarshish. <laughs> so he went down to the port of Joppa. There he found a ship that was going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board. Then he sailed for Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. All right, so clearly Jonah's not loving what God asked him to do. And he's going to run away from God instead of do what God asked him to do. In verse four, the Lord sent a strong wind over the Mediterranean Sea. A wild storm came up. It was so wild that the ship was in danger of breaking apart. 
All the sailors were afraid. Each one cried out to his own God for help. They threw the ship's contents into the sea. They were trying to make the ship lighter, but Jonah had gone below deck. There he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went down to him and said, How can you sleep? Wake up and call to your God for help. Maybe he'll help us and we won't die. The sailors start talking and they believe someone has to be to blame for all of this trouble that they're facing. They end up finding out it's Jonah. Now Jonah still claims to worship the Lord as his God, but in verse 10 it says, they found out he was running away from the Lord. That's because that's what he told them. Then he became terrified. So they asked him, how could you do a thing like that? The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what are we gonna do to make the sea calm down? Throw me into the sea, then things will calm down. This is all my fault, my fault. But the men didn't do what he said. Instead, they did their best to row back to land, but they couldn't. The sea got even rougher than before. Then they cried out to the Lord. They prayed, please Lord, don't let us die for taking this man's life. After all, he might not be guilty of doing anything wrong. So don't hold us responsible for killing him. They took Jonah and threw him overboard. The stormy sea became calm. The men saw what happened. Then they began to have great respect for the Lord, offered a sacrifice to him. They made promises to him. Now the Lord sent a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Whoa. I'm thinking that's some bigger consequence than any of us have ever faced for disobeying. God clearly needed Jonah to take some time to think. And I'm guessing three days in the belly of a fish definitely gave Jonah some time to think and pray and to talk to God. The truth is we don't want to focus on the disobedience and the consequence in today's story. We want to remember that if we truly want to be used by God to build his kingdom here on earth, then we need to turn to him no matter how we feel about things. In our story today, Jonah ran away from God rather than running towards God. What if when he was upset about what he had to do, he had turned to God instead? You see, once Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he did turn to God. In the next chapter, it actually tells us that Jonah spent time praying to God and asking God for help. But we don't want to wait for our bad moments to turn to God. So how are you feeling today? Feeling happy, sad, excited, tired? However you're feeling today, I want you to turn to God. Spend time with him. Because if you want to be used by God to build his kingdom, if you want to share the good news with others that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and rose from the grave, if you want to spread the, his love to those around you, then turn to God no matter how you feel. Oh, hey, you got me mid snack. This story got me really wanting goldfish for whatever reason. I hope you got yourself fueled because it's officially time for food for thought. Okay, so we saw that Jonah didn't do the best thing when he ran away from God in our story. This is an example of what we don't want to do. He didn't want to do what God asked him to do. We are going to have those moments too, honestly. We are going to have all kinds of different moments and emotions as we follow Jesus with our lives. But how can we run toward Jesus rather than away from him, no matter what we are feeling? How can you run toward God in your life? Really think about that this week and then don't just think about it. Do the things you come up with. You could pray, read your Bible, spend time with the God, talk to your parents to learn more about him. You made a great choice in learning from his word today with 3CK Church at Home, so don't stop there. Memorize this month's memory verse and get to action and remember God wants us to turn to him no matter how we feel. He's there for you and loves you. Isn't that amazing? The God of the universe is waiting to hear from you, so run toward him. Let me pray for us. Abba, Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for, man, how much you love us and just the ability that we come, that you want us to run to you. You want us to seek after you even more. Be with us this week and just bless our time. We love you and it's in your son's name we pray, amen. All right, it's time to check out our Exploronauts and how they're doing on that submarine this week. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Why don't clams give to charity? Why? <laughs> They're shellfish. <laughs> shellfish? Get it? Yes. It's like shellfish. Uh -huh. All right, I got another one. I got another one. What did the What did the ocean? <laughs> what did the ocean say to the man? What? Nothing. It just, it just waved at him. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> okay, okay. I got one more. I got no, one no, more. no, no. Absolutely not. I forbid it. We're supposed to be working here and not being hilarious. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, Exploronauts! We were interrupted yesterday by an emergency. What's your award? <laughs> in both 2019 <laughs> and in 2020. <laughs> so today I want to talk to you about the purpose of our exploration. But we don't even know where we're going. I was just about to reveal that to you. The SS Century's destination is the lost city of Atlantis. As you know, oceanographers and explorers have long been searching for Atlantis. The Greek philosopher Plato has been credited with making it up, but research has shown that this mythical place might, in fact, be real. It's a make-a-belief place. Don't you have any imagination, kid? It's Dr. Extreme to you. As I was saying, your destination is Atlantis. Your mission is to search for the rare orange kelp. Miminosa verdum corpus? Yes, it's a member of the Spinexus family. It actually has four main components. And number one. Thank you, Paul. As I was saying, this rare orange kelp has been proven to fight many diseases, even cancer. This is true. And we have been given the mission to find it, propagate it, and return with viable samples that we can use for future research and medicines. I am so excited to be a part of a mission that can help us cure cancer and so many other things. Me too, boss. This can be so helpful to all of mankind. I can't wait to see how my new electronic devices work. And we can use your, my biomarine skills and your engineering skills to test our new devices. Wait, wait, without my expertise, you're nothing. Paul, we'd rather work with you. I think us three can be an unbelievably amazing team. Yeah. Explore knots. This exploration will take you into uncharted marine territory. You will be delving to depths previously unheard of in a submersible. And you will encounter grave dangers. There will be dangerous sea creatures that could attack and seriously harm you. You could well run into a mollusk cephalopoda gigantic. No! The megalopod? Yes, it's also referred to as a megalopod. But the megalopod is the deadliest octopus in the world. It could eat a submarine for lunch and still one dessert. It's vicious. Yes, this is not a mission for the faint of heart. But it can wrap its tentacles around the submarine and then keep us underwater for months or at least you know, our, all of our air and food is all run out. Yes. But it can inject a deadly poison that will kill a grown up man. It also eats its arms when it's bored. <laughs> this is a mission for seasoned professional exploronauts. I'm in, sir. Me too. Oh. Paul? Paul? I'm sorry. You okay, bud? I'm fine, I'm fine. It's probably food or something. I, I, it, the food here is terrible and I'm not scared. It's okay to be scared, Paul. No, I am not scared and stop calling me Paul. I'm Dr. Extreme for y'all. Here we go again. Good job, Andrew. Um, um, um. Dr. Extreme, it is okay to be scared. This is a huge project and the risks are great. I wanted to tell you that because of the dangerous nature of the mission, we are going to have a Bible reading program where each day you will be responsible for reading and studying God's word every day. 
Well, maybe it's a good idea. It's a great idea! You should be reading God's Word every day, regardless whether you go on secret missions or go to school. And Dr. Extreme, I need to remind you that this is a team that will be working together. The only way you will succeed in this mission is to treat each other with respect. Dr. Extreme, do you think you can do this? Yes, yes. I'm so very extremely sorry. I, I, I was just scared and I was acting like I know everything. And then I almost blew up a submarine. I, will you guys give me a second chance? Of course we will, buddy. I, I mean Dr. Extreme. Oh, no, please call me Paul. You got it, Paul. Now, can you show us that model of the turbo re revolutions that you won the last year prize for? Oh, yeah, I got you guys. Now I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Don't forget to memorize this month's memory verse. Just send in your video saying your memory verse to kids at threecrosses.org to get a chance to win a prize. Enjoy your week, fellow Explorer Knots, and tune in next time right here at our Three Crosses Kids.